Jeff Morgan, the founder of Morgan Miller Plumbing in Grandview, Missouri, has traveled the world providing his services in places like Kenya and Haiti to assist them in getting clean drinking water. He also works alongside Habitat for Humanity in his community, all in return for what plumbing has provided to him. I'm Craig Morgan, and this is American Plumber Stories. Some days I'm working before the sun kisses the sky. I watch the world wake up from the seat of my truck. I'm out here earning my piece of the pie. A good, honest buck. No, it ain't love. I was taught to do the things I do so I don't depend on anyone. I work hard enough through the year so I play with I'm a son of a son of a plumber, so it was in my blood. I had uncles that were plumbers, cousins that were plumbers. The Monday after high school, I was digging a ditch, and it's something I'll never forget. Uh, my older brother gave me two shovels. He said, I need you to dig a ditch from here to there, or you can go to there and dig here. I'll be back in a couple hours. When I was an apprentice, my father and I had many a talk because I'd come home upset or frustrated. And he'd say, Jeff, just don't quit, man. Don't quit. In three or four years, you'll know everything you'll need to know, and you can work anywhere in the world. One day, I was in Haiti, helping put a medical center together for Plumbers Without Borders at that moment, thinking about what he said to me so many, many years before. And I said, see, Pop, <laughs> I'm anywhere in the world and I'm helping people. Morgan Miller Plumbing started with myself and a partner by the name of Bob Miller. At the beginning, we'd do anything that anybody would say yes to. We were doing new construction, we were doing rehab work, we were doing service work, we were doing drain cleaning. But my envision, my dream, was to be a service company, a residential service company that provided clean water and safe sanitation. Around 2011, things started to really change for this company, and that was because of social media. I was actually going to school for communication, and I needed an internship in marketing, and Jeff Morgan, happened to be looking and the right person said, well, hey, I've got the perfect person that would love this experience. So I came over and started working on this thing called social media and Facebook, you know, 11 years ago. And then over time, responsibilities grew, interests grew. Tasha was begging me almost every other day, maybe every hour, to be a plumber. I said, you don't want to be a plumber. You're doing what you're doing and it's great for the company, it's working, let's just leave it. So a year ago, Texas got hit really bad with a winter storm and Plumbers Without Borders called on us if we could afford to send any volunteers down. And at that point, Jeff and myself were really the only ones we could spare to go down there. And I'm thinking, you know I don't have experience, but sure, let's do it. Let's get in the car and drive 15 hours. But as we got down there and started actually working with the people and I saw the issues, I had that interest. And then I came back and I started to hound him about, I really want to go through the program. Nobody had applied for the scholarship yet because we had just, you know, opened it. And I said, what are your thoughts on me taking the scholarship? I'll apply, I'll do all of the stuff. Can I go through it? At first he said, no, we need you in here. You know, we, we really got to focus on you being here. But Persistence is key. <laughs> and he eventually, he said, yes, go through it. So I passed my journeyman's test. I officially have my plumbing certificate and I spend one day a week in the field. 
today we're out in the field. We are jetting an apartment complex. Um, what that means is we're putting a hose down a clean out for the main line and we're taking about 2500 psi's through the line to cut tree roots um, this is a step you would take before replacing it when you put the camera down a main sewer line you really never know what you're going to see down there or what the, the blockage is in this case today's was just a massive tree root i started plumbing in 1997. i didn't know that i wanted to do this full time or anything I, I went to work to help my cousin on a weekend and my cousin offered me a job he said well, why don't you come back monday and work with me full time i'll give you I think it was 12 bucks an hour. And it just kind of took off from there. So the older generation's kind of retiring off. It's getting a little bit harder to do what they do. And so now we're noticing a shift of younger adults finding this interest. I was in a Votex class my junior and senior year in high school. And that taught me that I was gonna be okay, that I'd be able to make a living. But for some reason, the school's systems all decided that we didn't need trade classes, that we didn't need shop class. So we built systems in place by having certain people on our staff sit on education boards that work with high schools. I sit on a few advisory board committees for different technical programs I'm with Independent School District. We just kind of help them build a better program, advise them what we're looking for, what we need out of these kids when they come to us. You know, we don't expect them to be good plumbers. We just need them to have a good work ethic. There's trade classes and trade schools all over our metropolitan area that people can go to while they're in high school and right after high school. Through Jeff's desire to continue to serve his community, they've established a scholarship through the local community college for future plumbers. The future of the industry is something we have a high focus on right now. So we work with high schools. We've also built up our own scholarship program that we provide a full scholarship ride to Johnson County Community College for their plumbing program. And then we also will do sponsorships where we'll provide work safe boots for juniors and seniors. So then they're able to go out into the workforce being prepared because it's expensive. Something like boots, jackets, attire, but to be safe is one thing, but to not have the money to be safe is another. So if we can help in any sort of way shape that, we're, we're going to be 100% on it because again, we need that talent in the pipeline or there is no future of plumbing. We don't need them to know everything, but we need them to have a good work ethic and we need them to be present when they're here. And then if they can do that, we can teach them how to plumb. That's the easy part. The scholarship was an, an easy investment. It's, yeah, I don't even know if I call it that. It's just, it's a necessity. We're making a difference. When they can see that they can make a good living and within three, four years, make six figures, what's wrong with that? What all trades do they teach here? Naturally plumbing, HVAC, electrical, automation, welding, and automotive. I've been at the Johnson County Community College for 11 years. Pr a year prior to that, I was with another technical college. Prior to that, I ran my own business, heating, cooling, plumbing, uh, for about 12 years. And, uh, and then previous to that, I had worked in the, the field for about five to eight years. Where I live, our junior college system, we don't have this structure as well. Mm -hmm. There's a huge need. I don't even think there's a school where you can learn to be a plumber outside of working for an employer. So, I mean, how important is for other states the need to do this to help the, the trade situation we have in our country? I think it's very critical. The thing I think that is the most important is when these guys come in in the fall, in August, and 18 to 25 years old, no idea what plumbing is, what they're doing. They've heard all the horror stories and then in eight months, they're walking out of here with a journeyman's license and they've got their whole entire future in their hand. And as an employer, if I saw somebody coming to me with a journeyman's license and a certificate for a plumbing certificate from a Johnson County Community College, I, I, I wouldn't let this guy go. That's awesome. And speaking of that, when we were with Morgan Miller today, they talked about Steve Cox, who went through their scholarship program. Yes. Who I think went through your class. Uh, yes, he took his journeyman's test. Uh, I believe he passed. From what I know about Steve is he came here two years ago, right before COVID hit, 
and uh, we were having a career fair, and uh, he just went right up to him, 18-year-old young kid, and went up there and said, I want to become a plumber. They brought him on, they sent him to school for a year, and he continued to work there part-time while he was taking classes, and I think he is doing exceptional out there in the field. So I've been plumbing for basically two years now since I graduated high school. We hired him from a job fair we were doing. He came up and was interested in the plumbing industry. We were cutting and threading pipe that day and doing demonstrations. He came up and seemed interested in it. We told him when you get out of school, give us a call, and he did, and he's been here ever since. Some of my friends, they're currently enrolled in college. They're going to school full time. Um, the difference being is that I'm making a decent amount of money while they're accumulating student debt and I don't have any student debt. I feel real lucky. Um, I'm really glad that I met Bob at Johnson County Community College and that they've given me the opportunities that they've had and I always try to improve every single day. There's never been a better time to be a plumber than today. It's never been more lucrative, it's never been safer to be a plumber than today. The tools are more advanced than they ever were when I started 45 years ago. I've never been without work. I've never been laid off. I've never had to search and wonder how I'm gonna come up with a paycheck this week. There's always been work. When I was a kid, it was if you don't go to college, you're gonna end up being a construction worker, and that's terrible. Well, you know, it's been pretty good for me. For me growing up, it was always made to seem like you don't, you don't want to be that. That's not a lot of money. You want to go this sector, do this section, when in reality, people were not telling you the amount of money that can be made. Would there be new car factories without bathrooms? No. People would be out looking to find a place to go to the bathroom or looking for clean water. Without us, would there be modern hospitals and doctors? No, we need water. We need facilities. And the pandemic the world just went through the last two and a half, three years, really brought that home. Yeah, we're plumbers. We don't like to talk much about the this, this silly jokes that are made about us because what we really do is provide clean water and safe sanitation to the world. Without us, there is no us. So even though the job can be nasty, even though it can be dirty, without us, civilization wouldn't exist. I'm Craig Morgan and you've been watching American Plumber Stories. Be sure to go to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button and check out all of our other socials. It's American Plumber Stories.